Hey YouTubers, Dice Smith here and welcome to my video series on auto estimating. In this series, we're going to talk about how to write estimates on cars. You know, cars that have been in a wreck or has got a dent. You know, how do you write an estimate? So to kick this video off, I'm going to start it with a quote. It says, organization is what you do before you do something so that when you do it, it is not all mixed up. So in this first lesson, we're just going to talk about, uh, you know, estimates, what are estimates, supplements, you know, how they're generated, uh, who needs estimators, and kind of setting up your estimating environment. As an estimator, it's important to fully understand what all the purposes an estimate serves. And it's also important to properly set up your estimating environment. Uh, to become efficient at generating thorough auto estimates. And this also includes the ASE A1 position the vehicle for inspection. So what are estimates? I mean, estimates, they're called different things, you know, like a damage report, damage estimate, uh, auto estimate, but they are basically the same thing. A damage estimate, however, is more than just a sheet of paper listing the total costs of repairs. An estimate is a contract or a mutual agreement uh, between two people. You know, as with real estate, you know, the, the owner and the buyer, they must agree on a price and they sign the document, the contract, and it's a mutual agreement. And an auto estimate, you know, it's the same way. You know, there needs to be an agreement between the repair shop and the customer, and the customer should sign the agreement to authorize the repairs. Now, one thing that the estimator needs to explain to the customer, and this is something that's really uh, misunderstood, um, is the estimate, you know, it is just an estimate, you know, it's, uh, it could change, you know, it's not the final invoice, you know, a lot of things could uh, factor into this, you know, maybe uh, there was some hidden damage, well, of course, you know, they would need to contact the customer and let them know, but it is going to change the estimate total, uh, maybe there was a price increase on parts, you know, maybe that changed, or, you know, there's a lot of things that may uh, make the final invoice a different price than, than the estimate was, and use an estimator need to explain this to the customer up front so they understand. Any additional charges, you're going to need to write a supplement, and, you know, the, the customer needs to understand this, and a lot of times you're dealing with insurance companies as well, and, and of course, they are familiar with the process. And not only do you need to have good communication skills with the, with the customer, you're also going to have to work with the insurance. In many cases, not every job is an insurance job, but a big percentage of them are. So you need to be able to uh, you know, communicate well with the insurance company. Now, every insurance company, it's going to be different the way they do it. You know, do you pick up a phone call them? You know, do you, are you a direct repair shop for them? You know, that, that is going to vary a lot. You know, but whatever procedure, you know, you do use your shop, the insurance company, whatever uh, relationship you have, and, and, you know, it's going to be your responsibility to make sure that the insurance company, you know, and the customer, you know, that you communicate with them and they all know what is going on. Now, the insurance company may be paying for everything, you know, uh, everything except the deductible on some of these jobs, but keep in mind, you know, the owner of the car, that is your customer. You know, that's the one that's going to bring it back to you, you know, if they have uh, problems you know have another accident or anything like that so keep in mind you know keep, uh, that you that you're working for the customer the car owner and it's your responsibility as the repair shop you know to repair that car back to its pre-accidental condition so once everybody agrees to the supplements the additional charges you know the insurance company and the, and the customer you know now you can include these additional charges uh, into the final invoice so there's different methods for writing estimates. I mean, for a long time, I mean, I remember, you know, whenever I started writing estimates, it's all by hand, you know, using Mitchell manuals is what we used. I'm sure there was other uh, books as well, estimating guides. But, you know, we'd have to look up the car, then we'd have to look up the part, and we'd ma manually write all that in, write the price in, the labor for it. You know, and that took a lot of time. Uh, nowadays, uh, they have computer estimates. You know, it's a lot faster. Uh, you, you put all the information in the computer, and it's more of a point and click. But even though they have all the computers today, I still think it's important. If you're interested in estimating, I still think it's very important to learn to write one by hand. Now, the reason I say this is, you know, you want to understand the process. Uh, because a lot of the computer systems, you know, they will deduct for overlap, for example. You know, they'll just automatically put that in. Well, you don't have to worry about it because it puts it in. But if you never understand the process and why, you know, you don't want to look dumb to the customer. You know, maybe the customer says, well, what's this deduct for overlap? You know, you don't just tell them, ah, don't worry about it. You know, the computer puts that in there. I don't know. I don't know what it is. You know, you can honestly sit there and explain to them because you know, you know, the, the procedure and why it deducted for overlap. 
And I think the better understanding of the of the procedures you have, uh, the better estimate you're going to be. You know, the less uh, unincluded items you're going to miss. And I think it's going to make you a much better estimator, you know, to understand the full process. Now, there is a sequence to estimating. Uh, most guides, you know, like the Mitchell... Um, the guides they have or the you know we use ccc now you know the computer system ccc1 uh, there is a sequence that most of these follow and i don't know every system out there but the, all the ones that i use have a sequence and it starts with the front bumper cover and ends with the rear bumper cover so it starts from front to back so when you write an estimate of course you want to start with the front panels and move back so you have the same sequence so when you go to the, to the computer or if you're using a estimating guides you know you can just follow that sequence make it much easier for you you know not flipping around so follow that sequence from from front to rear now there's also another sequence that it follows and that's from outside to inside so for example front bumper cover you know of course the bumper covers on the outside that's going to be first well what's underneath that bumper cover well there's an impact absorber you know there's a reinforcement bar you know and it just kind of goes from outside to in for each part group so who needs estimators well basically every repair shop you know every body shop dealership that repairs cars they're going to need an estimator you know they need someone that can write the estimates they can go talk to the customers they can look at the car and be able to write the estimates for them and also insurance companies you know they also need a they may call them appraisers or estimators you know they need people that will go and look at these cars and uh, write the damage report for them now, smaller shops, you know, body shops, it may be the, the owner, you know, it might be the manager, uh, the, the foreman, you know, that writes these estimates. But a lot of your larger, shop, larger shops, they have uh, people just for estimating, and some shops have multiple estimators. And again, the title for this, it's it varies. I mean, there is tons of them, customer advisor, you know, a lot of dealerships and body shops call them different things, but it's basically someone that, that uh, visits with the customer. You know, you're usually the first contact, you know, you, that sees the, the customer and you go and look at the car and you basically communicate with them for the entire process from the time you uh, write the estimate, you take the keys and give the keys back to them. So it is very, very important for this position. If you're considering this as a career, uh, it's very important to have very good communication skills. Now let's talk about setting up the work environment. You know, as with any work environment, it's important to be set up properly. Uh, if you want to be able to write estimates, you know, generate estimates thoroughly and efficiently, you know, you need to be set up properly. Now I remember uh, when I used to write a lot of estimates, I just wrote them out in the parking lot. And I'm sure there's still a lot of shops that do that. But if you have a stall set up for estimating, it's really going to simplify the process and it's really going to minimize the amount of supplements that you have. And I think whenever inspecting a car, good lighting is very important. And uh, even if you have good lighting or if you're out in the parking lot, you know, sunlight, that's good lighting. But there always are going to be areas, you know, in these cars. Maybe you got to look up under the dash or maybe you need to crawl up under the car and look at something. You really need a flashlight, you know, a good flashlight to look at these things. Because if you can't see in those dark areas too good, uh, it's really going to be hard to determine, you know, what's wrong. And probably this is going to lead to a supplement, you know, once you tear it down. And that's something you want to eliminate, you know, the less supplements the better, which we'll talk about that more later. And many times the estimator is going to need to inspect underneath the car. Now, if you have a stall set up, you have a lift and everything, that would, you know, that works really good. But, you know, not all shop estimating stalls have that. But you do need to have a nearby, you know, in your stall, you need, you need to have a jack and some jack stands, you know, that if you do need to lift it up, that you can crawl under there to look at some suspension parts or something that may be damaged. And it's also important to be uh, well organized in your work area. You know, uh, be organized, clean, and provide an easy workflow, you know, to move cars in and out. You know, it's it take up a lot of time if you have to shuffle cars around. You know, you pull a car in, you're in the middle of estimating it, you have to back it out to light another car out. You know, if possible, you know, you don't want to be in that situation. So, uh, have your, your stall set up to where you can pull a car in there and leave it, and it does not disturb the rest of the workflow with the rest of the shop. And also, you know, Keep, you know, stay organized. You need to have the, the tools that you need. You know, you don't want to have to go through the shop, you know, borrowing tools from different uh, body techs in there. You know, have the tools that you need. You're going to just need some basic tools. You know, if you might have to do a little bit of tear down, uh, but have your own tools set up in there. You know, have, a, uh, you know, your jack stands, your jack for the, you know, things that you're going to need to do, you know, because it's not going to look very professional if you're trying to ride an estimate and you're running through the shop or going and grabbing a technician to come and, you know, jack the car up and all that. So just be sure that you have, you know, the things that you need and make sure in your estimating area that, you know, everything has a place and that it's in place when you're not using it. 
So what tools do you need in your work area? Well, this is really going to vary, you know, depending on your shop and the shop's procedures, you know, how, how they, you know, do write their estimates. It's going to vary, but I'm going to give you some common tools that, that most of you, you know, will have to use. The estimator is going to have to take photos of the damage, you know, photos help others see what the estimate sees. Uh, they need to tell a story. Uh, photos are, are documents to prove the extent of the damage to the customers and to the insurance company. You need to take photos of the overall damage, you know, just a big picture of what happened, but you also need to take photos of the individual parts that are damaged. Now, I've used iPhones, you know, cell phones, they work good, but, uh, you know, Larry Montanez, you know, he's a, a, a consultant, and he says you really need a better camera, a better camera, a high quality camera, you know, one that can zoom in, especially like, a, you know, on some of your individual parts where you need a really good picture, he thinks probably you need a higher end camera. And especially, you know, a lot of the repair shops working directly with the insurance company, you know, just from the photos, you know, so probably it is a good idea to have a high quality camera to take these photos. And I remember whenever I was an insurance adjuster, we used to use a 35 millimeter cameras and we'd take these pictures. Then we went, had to go to get them developed. And, uh, you know, that was pretty expensive. I mean, today it is so simple. You know, you just take a picture, plug it into your computer and there it is. And you can send it to the insurance company, the customer or whoever. And another good thing about having a camera, you know, most cameras, most cell phones, uh, sometimes you may need to take a video. I mean, it, a video may tell the story better than just a still picture. So most uh, cell phones and cameras have the capability you know to take a, a quick video clip of, of what you're talking about maybe you can point at something or talk about what you're you're trying to point out and sometimes that might be the easiest thing to do and of course like I mentioned earlier you need good lighting and part of that you're gonna need a flashlight because some of those places I don't care how good the lighting is you know you're gonna need a flashlight to see some of those dark areas now you're going to need some hand tools. Now you're probably not going to need a full roll around box like a lot of your techs have, but uh, you know, just some, some basic tools, you know, screwdrivers, wrenches, uh, sockets, uh, trim tools, you know, just some of those basic things. Uh, maybe you need to take a bumper cover off or a door panel or, you know, just enough tools to, to get that off. Just your, just some basic hand tools. And you're going to need a paint mill gauge. And this just basically measures the paint to let you know, are you going to have to strip, partial strip, or can you just, uh, you know, final sand and paint? You know, because that's going to uh, determine, you know, how much, that's going to determine the cost of the estimate. And it's also a good idea to have a, a body filler gauge or magnet to determine the area that you're going to be working on. You know, has it got uh, prior damage or body filler? You know, that kind of may eliminate some problems that you could run into. And you're going to need some measuring equipment, you know, a tape measure and tram gauge for sure. And there might be cases where you really need to put it on the frame machine, you know, and get a computerized reading of, you know, the extent of the damage. And you're going to need a scan tool. You know, a lot of time with your electrical components, you don't know until you scan it. So you'll need a scan tool so that you can read the codes. And you're going to need estimating guides or a computerized system, you know, so that you can get the parts prices, the, the, the labor times and all that. Uh, probably... Just about everybody has moved to computerized systems. Uh, I know uh, CCC1, Mitchell, they have. Then there, then there's others too. But you're going to need something like that. Or, you know, there are might still be a, shop, a few shops out there that do use the estimating guides. You know, smaller shops that don't do a lot of volume, you know, they may use the estimating guides. But you're going to need something that you can, you know, look up the car, get the parts of the, you know, the price of the parts and the, and the labor time for those parts. And you're going to need some office supplies, you know, to write customers' names down and notes that you're going to take during the day. You know, there's going to be a lot of them. You know, you need pencils and pens and notepads, you know, things like that. And you're also going to need a place for your computer, of course. And, and you're going to need a phone. You know, you are going to be on the phone a lot. You know, you're going to be calling insurance companies, customers, you know, updating them on the, on the progress of their car. So you need to have an area that you can concentrate in and, uh, you know, have a phone available when you need it. And you're going to need an area to consult with the customers. And this may be the area where, you you know, you write the estimates and, and all that. Or it may be a separate area. You know, it's just going to depend on uh, your shop, you know, and how they're set up and, and how they do that. But you're going to need an area, you know, to consult with the customer, you know, talk to them and, and uh, you know, explain the process to them, you know, explain the estimate to them and hopefully sell the job to them. And I know there are some shops that even have an area for the insurance adjusters. You know, they have their own area to, to generate estimates and to consult with customers. As always, I appreciate you for watching these videos. I hope you enjoyed the, the lesson about auto estimating. I hope that you learned some from that. And uh, if you did, if you liked the video, be sure and give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Subscribe to us if you haven't subscribed to us. Share this with your friends. And if you have any questions or comments, just be sure and go down below this video in the comment section. You know, and there you can leave a question or a comment. And remember, if something's worth doing, do your best. 
and have a blast doing it. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.